On the spot news media, we got the latest news. We don't care about the views, we just represent it right. Put local news internationally every night. On the spot, wave that Jamaican flag from left to right. Let's get it right, y'all know the type. We ain't dealing with the hype. We make it take flight. Yeah, man, my viewers and subscribers, what a one. A blessed and wonderful Monday morning to each and every person out there tuning into on the spot news media. Now, my peeps, I don't know how we do it over on this side each and every morning. We have to give thanks and praise to the Most High Creator for the preservation of life because life is indeed the greatest. So, in the morning, my peeps, I have a few stories for share with you, the regular members of Chan Public, and also members of the diaspora. So, please like the video. Share the video, watch the entire vlog so you can get a full understanding and a better appreciation of everything we are going in a Jamaica. So watch your snow, my peeps, now the morning here we are going to kick it off with some updates. But I'm going to play a video clip for you. I don't want to just watch the video clip for just watching it sick, but watch it with intention and Think about where we are as a people today versus where we are coming from. And it is really sad to say that we have literally taken a hundred step backwards. Yeah, man. Now watch this video, as I stated, with intention. And then we're going to get into the meat of the matter right there and after. Listen. Now I'm pretty sure just watching that for some of us, it is really heartbreaking to see where we are as a nation. Now this man has since been identified as Patrick Smith, a resident of Old Britain in Portmore, said to be affectionately called Pastor or Man of God. Now a few days ago I made mention of a man that was literally burnt alive along the Clifton Main Road in the parish of St. Catherine. Now, Clifton is that community just before you get to the Bernard's Lodge, Cane Piece, right around at like a side where you can drive and come back into Spanish Town from Portmore. So the man, Patrick Smith, was kicked off the bus by the driver, influenced by passengers, one of which was that angry man that you could have seen speaking against the pastor. Now it is alleged that that video footage that I showed you is the actual video footage before he was kicked off the bus. So Patrick Smith was kicked off the bus. He was robbed and brutally beaten and set ablaze in a little board cage that they made. The video received by On The Spot News Media is really one of those videos that makes your stomach curl when you see a human being being treated in such a manner. Tires and pieces of wood thrown on top of him and he was set ablaze. He was very much alive because in the video you could see his feet kicking 
when death soaked in. It is also said that a police unit from the Greater Portmore Police Station responded to reports of a man being on fire near the entrance of the Clifton community. Upon the arrival of the cops, the burnt remains of a human body was seen laying on its back with remnants of tires and wood surrounding it. A fire unit from the Waterford Fire Station was called to the scene to carry out cooling down operations. Now investigators are probing the reports that Mr. Smith was beaten and then set ablaze by unknown assailants. Now we're going to hear from the distraught brother of Mr. Smith. That's Shane Smith, the brother of Patrick Smith. As he weighs in on the horrific way in which his brother's life was taken, unprovoked, might I add. Now listen. I feel really bad. It's from every night I cry. Every night. She stop, no, stop crying. She know I'm going in an evil in time. And when I see him, he just, he just, he just, he just, he just really bad, sir. He just really bad. Did you, I suppose you saw the video of how he was burned? When you, when you saw that video, what, what came to your mind? Sir, the only thing we can ask the church member, I really Patrick that in the fire. I really Patrick that in the fire burn. Sir, we need them to find them and them to see it. Them to see it justice. We need, we need justice for my brother. We need them to find them. Uh, and we need to ask them more. And we don't want me more to ask them why. When my brother do them, why them kill him like that? When my brother do them, the real man of God, my brother, not deserve that type of death. Tell me something. I hear that he was preaching on the bus and then he was asked to come off the bus. Yes, yes, yes. I'm mean, here to pain fear as well. Now that was the voice of Shane Smith, the brother of the deceased pastor Patrick Smith, speaking with Kirk Wright on RJR News. Now I'm going to play for you a message that was sent out by a regular member of Chan Public as she weighs in on the entire situation and clearly rest the blame at the feet of the driver of that JUTC bus. And I definitely agree with her. Even though it is said that a ban of preaching on JUTC bus was implemented a few years ago because persons were complaining that some of the pastors were more so being more vested in getting monies out of their pockets. Hence the reason why there was a ban placed on preaching on the bus. But if you must let somebody off, find the nearest police station, find the nearest place where the person would not be hurt or harmed, by criminal elements in those areas say in a way listen at the driver falls anybody responsible for the man's death is the driver imagine the man come from the bus and a preach right in pain fear never dare ask nobody in just that preach and because some people them can't take the preaching and they can't bother to hear the word of god them influence you Thank you for them, them influence you to take off the man off of the bus and you left the man on a lonely road and then burn the man, kill him. Are you responsible for him death, you know? Are you responsible for him? Are you for God prison for him death? Are you for get fired for your work? Are you could have done it to anybody else? And are you responsible for him death? Imagine it's not like say you and the man in an argument. You don't, and you kick the man off by a bus. And even if you kick him, kick him off by a bus, where it's at a safe location or it's a safe place. But the man has preached the word. And you follow the people, them. And you kick them, get, get the man off of the bus right now in the danger zone. And you, you forgot jail for him death. And I pray the family sue JUTC because JUTC is it's negligent for a driver do that. And if it can't reach JUTC, I pray them sue you and you forgot jail for a man death. Because let's face the fact, a man burn, them, them kill him and burn him. Nobody now got to talk. Nobody is not going to talk. Who and who did that and who and who did that participant because they let him off in our area. Right? 
So, nobody are you responsible? Are you for God jail for him there? Yeah, you. You couldn't do it to anybody else. Look how much like Mr. Farm bus and taxi. Sometimes me take taxi and sometimes me take bus. I hear people are talking about man and woman and all sorts of sitting there with who are big. Mm? But you know, on a wicked, on a wicked, it's so, oh, the family. So you, the, the JUTC driver, and all the company responsible because this is negligence. This is negligence. If somebody pay, you know, say, oh no, it's the transport center for Kingston and St. Catherine, and yet still. Or not drop off people anywhere like some careless people are supposed to conduct themselves professional. You understand? They are hope they get something out of it. Because on is wicked. Nobody in the area now got talk. Because you have some area in Kingston, they will do you things if they don't know you. And we don't know what transpired there, but they leave the man now and danger zone. May I tell you say God for strike you. I mean now take it back. That can, um, we know say people are look and say even if we reach you to what you do, you responsible for it. You J U T C driver. Yeah, how you sleep, how you sleep, how you eat. Eh? If you know say, me say me de pa, me go pa, me used to ride there you and you take influence and ask nigga and kick the man off and make in our area, in our zone. And something happened to the man. You forgot jail. You and your family for suffer for it. Suffer for it. Suffer for it. May I tell you, little things are surface up. And I hope an investigation and somebody oh, investigation happen. And I hope somebody held accountable. Accountable for that mandate. You know tell you? God right for the power you. You don't jail you TC driver. You see not you see? tell you say the place gone and the country gone. We, just look how much it now go on. Hmm? Look at the security guy them. Hmm? Look at it, it, it done man and the fish tic tac hmm? Look how much it now go on in the country. Let me tell you the place. On, on the ground. On the ground. Jamaica on the ground. I know. The, um, the man, I bet if I did stack argument if they attack, nobody will have nothing to say. Hmm? I bet if that cuss up bad on a carrier, nobody will have nothing to say. And you wouldn't take the influence of a kick him off by boss. You would not take influence to kick him off the bus. But you kick him off the bus time I preach where I make the man dead. You forget, you forget haunted. May I tell you, in family, if you pray down judgment by you. Judgment by you. So in another update, my peeps, in yesterday morning's vlog, I made mention of a notorious reputed criminal element from the Ambrook Lane community in the St. Andrew Central Police Division. Ambrook Lane is a little garrison community that runs off Mullines Road coming from Half a Tree. So it's just a little bit out of Half a Tree along Mullines Road. Now, a fatal knockings and clappings took place in the parish of St. Elizabeth Gutters, to be more specific of this criminal element here presently on your screen. More popularly known in the streets as Tolo, but his birth name is Rahim Tolok, but them call him Tolo in our streets. So he is a old dirty kind of boy from down in the Ambrook Lane community who has been wreaking havoc over the years in that community. Now he is to and from that community because of the ongoing gang violence in that community. So he's either in there or he is sometime in the Pienland area, also in the St. Andrew South Police Division. So we're going to know is that Saturday in the side for attend a funeral in St. Elizabeth. The funeral was for a female from the Ambrook Lane community, but what he thought he would have been safe given the fact that it is all the way over there in St. Elizabeth. Now, Tolo, as an arch rival, this criminal element here presently on your screen identified as Buzzman. Some people call him Buzzy, some people call him Dudu, but one in the same. So, Bozman had some family members attending the same funeral. Bozman, by the way, is among you, the regular members of Chan Public, in the diaspora in the United States of America. 
So Bozeman had some family members and friends that also attended the same funeral of a resident of the Ambroclean community in Gotas, St. Elizabeth. So it is said that Tolo was seen at the funeral. And of course, Bozeman was alerted. So Bozeman met the call at town, round up him knackis and clappis them. And they traveled all the way from Ambrook Lane to Gutters in St. Elizabeth. Go slap with Tolo, bilious. Yeah, man, them deal with the situation, like, grimy. Tolo was seen sitting in his motor vehicle with his body slumped to the left. All I marrow, leak out from the passenger seat. Yeah, man, me I tell her, say, them deal with it away. And this is not his first rodeo being shot up as he was conned up three times prior to this one. He survived all other attacks, but they made sure that he was laying there lifeless this time. So this is just to show you, you know, my peeps, oh, these criminal elements are fearless, traveling from all the way in Kingston and head all the way down to Gutters, St. Elizabeth, undetected. Poor, may I tell my peeps. Them brave. Yeah, man, totally fearless. So them criminal elements are roll out and had a made-up mind. As in, they're basically saying, we are going to do it. Are dead. Yeah, man, do or die type of situation. But anyway, make we continue. And still in the St. Elizabeth Police Division, on Saturday also, this man presently on your screen identified as Horace Rowe was taken out in a hill of bullets in the Pepper district in the parish of St. Elizabeth. It is said that Horace Rowe was at home when he was called out of his house by persons who seemingly known to him and then tragedy struck as he was hit all over the upper body and head in a hail of bullets. The criminal elements escaped in the area on foot. Poor I may tell my peeps. The thing rough. Now over there in the Chulani Police Division. The Chulani Police Division has now recorded at least 19 fatal knockings and clappings since the start of the year. And that tally has increased after the fatal knockings and clappings of a man in the Brixton community on a Thursday afternoon. Now the man in question is presently on your screen. 47 year old Raman Dobson, said to be from the Brixton Road community in the parish. Now reports from the Falmouth police would suggest that sometime around 3 p.m. Residents discovered Dobson's body at his home and then alerted the police. Upon the arrival of the police, Dobson was seen inside his house with what appears to be some woolly pecan wounds to the upper body and head. He was however pronounced, you know what, at the hospital. Meantime, residents have expressed concern about the spike in the peaceful parish well, at least it once was. Marva Robinson stated that the crime is becoming prevalent in Chulani. She stated that one time Chulani never used to have so much fatal knockings and clappings. It was a peaceful parish, but things change for the worse as scammers and scamming infested their parish. Another resident stated that he believes crimes in the parish are being carried out by migrant criminals. Now for criminals to migrate to your parish, to your community, there has to be someone there that welcomes them with open arms. So I've always stated this, persons living in these rural sections in these parishes should be mindful of who you allow to come in your immediate space. Now over there in the troubled war torn crime riddle the Kingston Western Police Division, a 15 year old female student, yes you heard me right, a 15 year old female student has been arrested and charged with possession of ganja 
after reportedly being found with the illegal drugs on the compound of the Denham Town Police Station. Yeah, man. So, when I hear things like this, you definitely know, say, is an adult send them with the drugs for probably go get a squaddy for carry it in at the cell for the prisoner them or then throw it at a certain pint behind the cell and the cell man them can pick it up. I don't know how them do it, but something in a something right there. So, so reports indicate that sometime around 9.38, PM, the teenager was seen entering the station's compound through the back gate carrying a brown bag which aroused the suspicion of an officer that was on duty. She was reportedly subsequently stopped and questioned but was unable to provide a satisfactory explanation for her presence on the police compound at that hour of the night. A search was carried out of the brown bag that she had and that brown bag reportedly revealed to be having inside of it a clear plastic bag containing 10 parcels of ganja weighing over 2 ounces, 10 parcels also of tobacco and 2 packets of Rizla and an orange lighter. The accused was charged in the presence of her mother. No, boy, may I tell you, and I must have mother sent her still, you know. But obviously, somebody sent her to go over the station, to carry go give somebody in the station. And to how oh, all of that look is like, she go give her police, and then the police carry it in the cell. I saw it look. I'm not for sure if I saw it go. But the whole scenario just look that type of way. Because what other reason would she have? To be taking the illicit drug in the station, walking at the back gate, as a matter of fact, 9.38 p.m. Make it make sense. Yeah, man. So anyway, my peeps, remember to like, share, subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned to On The Spot News Media as I continue to bring you fresh news and updates in subsequent newscast. On The Spot News Media. Yeah, man.